So the last examples that we're going to look at all fall into this category of, of rate in, rate out problems. Um, you might call these conservation problems or maybe um, concentration. There's lots of different things. So typically, wa the way these look is you've got, you know, I don't know, like a pool or something, right? So you've got, let's say you got a pool and you fill it with some substance, right? So, so the pool initially maybe has just water in it. Um, and, and so let's imagine that somebody comes along and they, they spill something into the pool that they shouldn't have. So now there, there's some kind of substance in that pool that's not supposed to be there. Um, and so you have sort of an initial amount, right? So you have, I don't know what we want to call it, maybe um, X, right? So there's some, some initial amount that gets spilled in, right? Um, and, and so then, of course, you have some, let's say, initial concentration, which would be the amount spilled in divided by, let's say, the, the volume of water in the pool. And maybe that depends on T, or maybe it's going to be constant. In a lot of things, it's going to be constant, right? Um, and now, I mean, if this is a case of a substance was spilled into a pool, well, I mean, you're going to drain the pool, right, and get everything out, and then you're going to refill it with clean water again. Um, but maybe you're in a situation where it's not a pool that it was spilled into, maybe it's like a lake, right? And you can't necessarily drain the lake. You've got to count on, well, there are rivers flowing in, there's rivers flowing out, and, and you're hoping that eventually, you know, that water flow is going to clean the substance out of the lake. Um, I, guess, I guess it ends up heading off down river, but I don't know if that's those people's problem. It's not the lake's problem anymore. Um, so you generally will have something where there's, you know, there's an amount coming in, right? So there's some inflow. And maybe there's like a tap or something at the bottom, right? So there's some outflow. And so maybe we're trying to get rid of a substance or maybe we're trying to mix substances. Some of these sometimes are considered these mixing problems or something like this, right? So there's a certain amount coming in, certain amount coming out. Um, and so you'll be told, you know, the rate at which things are flowing in, in terms of maybe the concentration and the volume, the rate at which it's flowing out. And of course, the rate, you know, the, the amount of material coming out, well, that depends on the concentration in the pool at a certain amount of time, right? But typically, typically the way you would set most of these up, right, is you'd say, okay, well, you know, the, the rate of change in X, if X is the amount in the pool, well, that's going to be essentially the, you know, the, the rate at which it's coming in minus the rate at which it's going out, right? And, and then you've got to figure out, okay, so the rate in, rate out, how are those going to work out, right? So typically the rate at which it's coming in is going to be some fixed amount, right? So you'll be told, okay, there's a certain concentration um, coming in, so there's like a concentration coming in, right? Times the, you know, I don't know, um, volume coming in, but this would be more like a rate, right? The rate at which the volume is coming in, um, and then the rate at which is going out, right? And then, well, the rate at which it's going out will be the concentration of the stuff in the pool. But the concentration of the stuff in the pool is, well, the amount of stuff in the pool, which is x of t, right, divided by the total volume of the pool or the lake or whatever it is, right? Um, and, and then you got to multiply by the kind of the rate at which the volume is flowing out. Right, so you get something like this. Um, and, and actually, you can kind of see that, uh, especially if this is a constant, right? I mean, you are dealing with a linear equation here, right? If that's a constant, that's a constant. There's x of t. Um, you do have something that looks an awful lot like a linear equation. Um, so we'll look at some specific examples with particular numbers. We'll see how this looks in practice. Um, and uh, that'll be it for the differential equations material in this course.